Welcome to another Photoshop editing video with another image from Hamnoi on the Lofoten Islands in Norway. Instead of a warm sunny image, we will be creating a very dark and gloomy shot. To follow along, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's go. Okay, first off, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which will just lessen the contrast a little bit and I just get more control over it myself. If you take a closer look at this image, you can see it feels like it has a very strong blue color cast. And that's one thing I want to fix right away. Therefore, I'm going to use the white balance temperature setting right here and just give it some warmth by bringing up the temperature. And I'm raising it until I get to a point where it looks more natural. I think that is pretty good. So let's leave it at that point for now. Let's start making the shot look a bit darker. I'm going to drop the exposure first. And I try to not underexpose anything, so that's a good spot right there. Also, I do want to bring up the whites just to get some more contrast going on in this image. Of course, this will restore some brightness, but don't worry about that. We will adjust that later with a few local adjustments. In general, this image seems to be a little hazy. That's partly because of the weather, but also sadly there were a few water droplets on my lens. I don't think I can fix that problem, but I will try and just add a little bit of dehaze. This should at least restore some clearness for the mountain in the back. I'm going to push it quite a bit for this shot as it works very good. So this is looking nice. And then let's also introduce some more vibrance to get some colors going on for this shot. Just like that. Nice. Let's compare to before. You can immediately see we fixed the color cast. Also the mountain in the back looks way better this way with the added dehaze. So let's focus a little on those local adjustments. First off, I do want to change the sky and make it even darker. So for this reason, I'm going to make a sky selection. You can see Photoshop is doing an okay job at selecting the sky. Still, I want to adjust that mask by subtracting a radial gradient because I want to have the darkness mainly in the top part of the sky. So let's just get rid of the bottom portion like this. That's looking pretty good. And in here, let's bring down the exposure. Again, I'm dropping it very, very heavily. All right. And at the same time, I do want to introduce a lot of clarity to get structure in those clouds up there. That looks pretty good. Let's further work on the mountain. For that, I'm going to create radial gradient mask and just place it over the mountain like this. In here, we can add contrast by dropping the shadows slightly. Actually, let's bring them down all the way. Also, I can drop the blacks just like that. And to make it look a little clearer in here, I'm going to increase the texture as well as the clarity. And again, we can add a bit of dehaze just like that. Then let's work on the waves in the foreground. Again, I'm using another radial gradient mask. And I just want to target all those white waves down here. I do want to make them brighter, so let's bring up the exposure. Again, I'm working with a little bit of texture, which works really, really good for those waves to add some structure to them. And I also want to bring up the clarity. And as you can see, this works really, really good. I do prefer the water to have a little bit of a blue color cast. So I'm going to drop the white balance temperature in here and just add this subtle blue tone. All right, that's looking really good. Then let's add a radial gradient on the horizon level of this image. I just want to brighten up this area a bit. So with this mask, I'm going to push the whites. That's a bit too much, so let's lower it. But this is looking pretty good. 
Now let's again compare to before. You can see a huge difference, especially in the foreground, which looks super dramatic now. So let's continue with the color grading. One thing I want to do is to restore those red tones of those hearts in the center. That's a little tricky since we almost have no color left in here, but I still want to try it. So first off, we don't really have any real reds in here. I want to change it by targeting the magenta hue and just pushing it up. And it's almost invisible, but it does change the color of those huts. I'm heading into the saturation tab and I'm going to push the red saturation, of course. Also going to push the magenta saturation. Again, not much is happening for now with those settings, but now let's also take a look at the luminance tab. In here I'm going to push the red luminance all the way up. And also let's push the magentas all the way up. So let me deactivate those color mixer settings so you can actually see a tiny difference. But since we have now added a little more red in here, I can use another mask to further fix that. So let's go into the masks menu again here. Let's create a color range mask. And of course, I'm going to select the red of those huts. You can see we have a very good selection right here. If you want, we can refine it even further. Like this, maybe. Let's bring up the exposure, making those huts a little brighter. That worked pretty good. Of course, we do lose some colors doing this. So I'm going to first add a little bit of temperature. Just a little bit. And I'm also going to push the saturation here. And now we do have a very vibrant red tone in this image. Then back to the color grading. We are done with the color mixer. Then let's do the split toning. Here I just want to work on the shadows and the midtones. Of course, for this shot, a cold color tone works really, really good. So let's choose a hue first. And I do only want to apply a very, very tiny amount of saturation here. I think that's already enough. And let's do the same for the midtones. Go with a blue hue and a super low saturation value. All right, perfect. Now we're pretty much done with the raw adjustments. Let me just chop this image real quick, dropping the radius, increasing the detail, applying some masking, and of course, adding a little bit of sharpening. Perfect, and that's it for the raw adjustments. Now let's finish this shot in Photoshop. First off, of course, there are a few sensor spots. So let's remove them using the spot healing brush, just roughly brushing over them. Also, I'm just overall cleaning up the shot from annoying objects. All right, but that's looking really good. Now, I don't really like the bottom part of this shot, so I think I just want to crop it a bit. I don't want to take away too much of those white water waves, but this is looking pretty good. So at this point, what can we do to further improve this shot? I think I do want to take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. In here, I want to give the Pro Contrast filter a try. Just raise the dynamic contrast a bit and see if that's any useful here. Maybe just a tiny amount. Okay. Now I've already tried the polarization effect. That didn't look too well, so I want to skip that. Maybe we could use some Brilliance Warmth in here. But instead of adding warmth, I want to drop the warmth slider just a tiny bit again. But I think that looks okay. So let's apply it like this. Now let's take a final look at the histogram. You can see we do have a little room left for a bit more brightness. So I want to try that. In this case, I'm using a levels adjustment layer. And I'm just picking the point for the highlights and drag it to the left. That's a bit too much already, but I think that's a good spot right here. And thus we just added some more contrast to our image. So at this point, I want to stop the post processing. 
I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.